All right, so let's talk about firmware. The firmware that runs on the board for your Castle Mini 3D printer. So you go to download, and you've got the host software to run on your machine for whatever operating system you have. And then you can download the firmware. So I'm using Repetier firmware 0.83. Let's go ahead and open this up. <coughs> We've got the Repetier firmware. This is opened up with the Arduino IDE. If you don't have the Arduino IDE, go ahead and uh, download it. So there are a lot of different tabs on here, but there's only two that um, we will really be looking at. Configuration.h is where you do most of your configuration. And please keep in mind, I've, I've already set mine up, so I'm probably going to miss a lot of uh, little gotchas. It took me a very long time to get mine set right, so I wasn't able to document the entire process. And you will probably end up uh, setting some of these settings differently. First thing we have here is how many extruders do you have? I just have one. And then you define your motherboard. Mine is 33. We go up here. I'm using ramps 1.4, so that's why there's a 33 here. Now, let me show you real quick. It says include pins.h. Let me show you pins.h and why you might ever want to look at that one. So pins.h is sets up all of the input and output pins on whatever electronics you have. If we look for 33, there it is. Arduino Mega, sorry. Arduino Mega pin assignment. So 33. Here are all the pins for the different stepper motors, X, Y, and Z. Our, our machine is actually a delta printer, so it's really an A, B, and C, but it doesn't really matter here. Your extruder outputs. Uh, the thing I want you to notice is my heaters. I've got a extruder and I've added a heated bed. You might need to change these settings. And then also I'm using a fan pin so that the Arduino can s speed up and slow down uh, a cooling fan. And then everything else should probably be default. Drive system. So drive system three, right here are our choices. Three is a Delta printer. So we need to look at these settings real quick. Belt pitch, mine is two millimeters. Um, how many teeth are on the pulley that's on your stepper motor? Initially, I thought it was 16. Definitely messed up the scale of everything. So when you told it to move 10 millimeters, it moved, you know, eight millimeters. It was, it was bad. So how many teeth? If you're not using a belt type down here, you would put in pulley diameter. Um, steps per rotation of stepper motors. Your stepper motors may be different. Micro steps. On my ramps board, there are some jumper pins, and they're all in there. So I have 16 micro steps. I don't believe I modified that. These steps per millimeter, um, I'm not sure if you're gonna, yours is going to be different or not. These may have been default. I did change the z-axis. On a normal Mendel Prusa, uh, the z is a screw. It's a different link, so this is usually a huge number. Steps per, per millimeter, um, yours will be different depending on what type of extruder you're using. Mine is a Greg's accessible extruder, so 900 works for me. Let me show you how you can figure this out. This other extruder stuff I don't believe I touched. Keep in mind if you get a different version of firmware it can be changed by the last person that tested it before it was released so it could have completely different settings in here 
I've noticed from one version of firmware to the next um, the settings are completely different so you might have to check everything PID for the extruder ext the second extruder let's get to the good stuff here they're mister heated bed I do have a heated bed so I said true you can limit the maximum temperature of the bed so it doesn't mess something up if you accidentally try to heat it up more um, the PID settings don't really mess with any of this stuff but note that you can change this PID max and notice that the maximum is 255 if it's 255 that means the firmware is allowed to just turn it on and completely on when it's trying to warm up so if you want to maybe limit how much current is drawn by your heated bed or if you have a glass that you don't want it to heat up too fast you can turn this number down and your heated bed will not heat up as fast so your in-stop configuration could be different depending on how your in-stop switches are wired if they're normally open or normally closed um, these are the settings that work for me um, invert direction you can actually just unplug your stepper motor and flip the cable over or you can invert it here so home direction this is an important thing that I, I uh, struggled with it tells you which direction is home so negative one means it goes all the way up to the top and that's where your in stops are and that's the minimum and then whenever you print it goes all the way down to the maximum and starts printing so minimum software in stops maximum loss software in stops you can put those in but I I disabled them during testing and just left them off so back move whenever it homes it goes up and hits the in stops it stops goes back five millimeters and then it reduces the speed by two so half speed and then it checks the in stops again and makes sure that it got a really good uh, homing position and then after it homes it moves off of the in stops one millimeter which doesn't really matter all right max link this one is critical I'm gonna show you how to get a rough check and then eventually uh, get this tuned up to exactly what you need a rough way to, to, to find printable height is to get everything up to the limit switches we look on here and it looks like it's about 223 how you will, will essentially fine tune this thing down to exactly what you want is you'll home it you'll turn on the power first using the software you can manually jog the head up and down All right, so click home. It homes. And in the firmware, I've already set that this link. But what you do is you jog it down until it gets really close. Are keeping in mind what the, the starting number was. So you know this is where you're starting. You get it down until it's pretty close. And then you start using smaller increments to get it closer and closer to the pig, to the uh, print surface. So mine is not dragging very hard. If I go down one more tenth, it'll be dragging. And you're going to have to fine tune this for yourself. But this is basically how you get the number you need. All right, Delta Drive System. So these are all critical uh, settings here for our delta. 
just starting at the top we're going to measure our diagonal rods and see how long they are put that in here I don't believe I changed these and then we have our end effector horizontal offset carriage horizontal offset and printer radius these numbers if you look right down here you'll see where they're used it takes the printer radius in printer radius minus the end effector horizontal offset minus the carriage horizontal offset I uh, snagged this picture off the internet I will do my best to put some links up of where I got all this information so you can see the different inset offsets here there's the carriage offset the end effector offset that is from the center of the extruder to the nut here and then our delta radius is what's left in between so you can see it's doing this math here it takes this minus this minus this I mean they could have just given us one number here we just type it in so what you do is you measure them get them as close as you can and then I just picked this number and this is where I did my fine-tuning it it wasn't right so I just tuned this until tuned this number the printer radius until my print my extruder moved perfectly flat over the surface let's go take a look at that so hopefully you'll be able to see here the number the printer radius is too low and what you're going to see is it's going to print like it's a, a mountain peak. So I'm going to go ahead and move it to the side and you'll see the head start coming down closer to the bed. It comes back up and then it goes back down. All right, my number is too high, so it's going to cup. I'm going to move it to the side. You should see it going up. Let's go back the other way. Notice how it rises. So tune that number as closely as you can. If you overextend and you hear it slip a little bit, you probably have to go back home. So home. I was greedy, I went too far. I'm coming back down. I'm going up one tenth of a millimeter so it's just loose. Anyway, we can try going this way. It's about the same. So anyway, you're going to have to repeat this until it's as flat as possible. Now if you notice that your bed is unlevel, so if one side, it always digs into one side, and the other one sides it comes up a little bit. Well, what you can do is you can go up here and adjust one of these end stops up or down so that it'll, the whole structure will go up and home like this. Because that is home and from there is where it gets everything else. So you can just use one of these end stops, pull it up a half a millimeter or a millimeter, and then you come down here and you find that it looks like it's printing perfectly flat. Moving on to important stuff. Feed rate, homing feed rate. I don't know if I've messed with these, but uh, I could have. Max acceleration jerk I didn't I didn't mess with these so extruder control communications notice that I use 115 too I I've had really good luck with that so that's the speed I use to communicate to the Arduino board kill method you can have a uh, EEPROM mode so EEPROM this is critical if you have an LCD screen you're gonna to wanna to turn EEPROM on that way all of this stuff is stored in EEPROM and you can fiddle with this stuff with these settings using the LCD screen 
and then down here we have some more stuff about the user interface and what you would see on that uh, the default values on the the LCD screen anyway if you have EEPROM mode on you're gonna come in here you're gonna adjust things you're gonna try to upload it to the Arduino and lo and behold the settings won't change that's because EEPROM mode is turned on now I've had problems even with EEPROM mode turned off that the stuff was saved in EEPROM and it, it would never never change so if you get into that situation and that can also be caused by if you try several different versions of firmware if you try Marlin, Sprinter then you go back to this and your settings aren't changing right and the thing just is not acting right I've had the in stops not work what I've had to do is uh, go find the, an Arduino sketch to zero out all of the EEPROM and then you can just reload this sketch onto the Arduino and you're good to go. I've done that several times. And then of course once you have everything set up the way you want it, you need to set up and pick what type of Arduino board you're using. I'm using the Mega then you select which COM port it's on. I usually save it and then hit upload. It should take um, oh, 20, 30 seconds to upload it and then you're good to go. You can turn on your uh, host software and test her out.